everyone and welcome to a little video and in this video I'm going to just talk about uh, my latest course on the Jabava London system so this is my third course that I've done and I, I'm going to give you lots of new ideas lots of interesting concepts and this is the longest um, video course that I've ever done and maybe one of the most detailed uh, but I just want to point out to you some of the modern sort of trends in the Jabava London nowadays in this video Give you a little bit of a free introduction and hopefully some of you if you want to support what I do uh, Will buy the course which is in the link in the description And it also gives me a chance to put on this little number eh? <laughs> oh, look at it very smart isn't it nice Which I, I'm not brave enough to ever wear outside so I can only wear in my bedroom hence why I'm wearing it now Anyway, uh, let's now just have a look at um, mainly what I'm suggesting in this course that um, I haven't suggested in previous courses, why I'm suggesting in this course what I am, and um, also how theory has developed since my first Jabava course that I did with Blair and my chessboard course. So this is my third course, this is after those two previous courses. I present this with Blair. We try to make it very simple to learn for you guys. If you're beginners, this is perfect. But also, if you're uh, more of an expert player, there'll be a lot of new theory in here as well. Now, there are about 55 different videos in the course, and we go through things um, after the, our, our setup, where we're going knight c3 and bishop f4, obviously. We go through things in order of um, popularity. And um, after going, having a look at lots of uh, model games and uh, things like that to give you an idea of what you should be trying to do in Jabava London, the first line we look at, and we're going to come to the first sort of big change, is Bishop F4. And now, what is Black's most common move here? And this is something we're doing differently in this course we've never done before. We're looking at all the games on Lee Chess elsewhere and seeing what you're most likely to face. And the most common move here is e6. So this is what you're most likely to get um, when you're playing Jabal of London. And in previous courses for chessball and other, um, you know, from the first one I've done in Ginger GM, we've given e3 as our main move. Uh, and remember, this is a Ginger GM course. There's a link where you can buy it on Ginger GM. It's on sale for a little limited time if, if you want to get it. 30 day back money guarantee, all that palaver. But what we've done, we've listened to a lot of your feedback. Even though I don't always respond on YouTube and elsewhere, I do read the feedback. Uh, so, you know, more often than not. And the majority of feedback that we were getting was really after this move something you didn't like facing and not just in this position but in other positions was an early bishop b4 uh, and this move was annoying a lot of you maybe understandably uh, this pin can be a little bit frustrating Magnus Carlsen's had this position I think against Jeffrey uh, Jean uh, and he uh, struggled to get an advantage here so what we are now suggesting is the move knight b5 so this is the first big difference and the idea of this move is to avoid any situations with bishop b4 and now if black plays knight a6 which is you know a way to try and stop that one we're just going to play e3 and after what is the most likely move c6 our knight comes back and it's a very peculiar way to start the game because we've wasted time going out and back. But Black's wasted time by putting his knight on the edge of the board by playing a move which we consider a little bit of weakness. And in a lot of positions, this bishop takes knight can be a very strong move. For example, here, here, just damaging Black's pawn structure. So this is our first kind of suggested and quite exciting new way of playing now the second most common way of playing after let's say the standard setup here and again these are the sort of current trends and what what's happening because you have to remember i sort of came up with the name jabava london system i was the first person ever to produce anything on it the video course with blair and it's developed a lot since then so we've kept an eye on it and this is my next big work really after my you know chessboard course 
to um, advertise it and, and things have changed and in this position the second most popular move is black playing the bishop out to f5 at some point or even after a c6 move now in the new Jabava course and again we go into these things in a lot more detail when when you know in, in if you purchase the course in the new Jabava course we're having a different approach here as well to what I've suggested in previous publications. In previous publications, videos, I suggest you go e3 and then you try f3 and g4. And you can go for this kind of stuff here and you go g4 and h4, but the bishop normally pops back here at some point. Now, the problem with these lines is that I found the knight on g1 just doesn't have a good square to get out to. And we also found by playing lots of games online, myself and my co-presenter, Blair Connor, who's an expert in these lines, we found that, um, okay, E3 is a fine move after, let's say, either C6 or E6. It doesn't really matter. E6 is probably a better move. That a much simpler approach is to first go knight to F3. And the point is, we want to just go knight to e5 and g4 and h4. So we want to do the similar idea, but our knight, rather than being stuck on this rather sad square on g1 in the previous lines, is in the middle of the board. And there's been many games that have gone, and even at top level, that have gone along the lines of, let's say, black plays a move, just to demonstrate this newish idea. Our knight comes in, and now, let's say, black plays a normal move, he suddenly gets hit by something like this. And again, I'm not looking at things in too much detail in this video. I'm just giving you a little bit of an update of what's happening. And the point being, if that bishop retreats, we now come h4, and this bishop can get in a lot of trouble. And one line that um, we have in Botnik versus Adriakin. So Adriakin, one of the strongest Russian players ever, he lost this position or as black because he decided, well, he has to stop winning the bishop. And this happens in a lot of games. And now the whole point is, look how much better our knight is in the center. So we've obviously looked at all the latest games to try and give you the best recommendations. Everything is checked with Stockfish 15, all the positions. So we've tried to uh, do a lot of computer analysis and we try to judge things for ourselves. And after pawn takes, we go here. And after the knight comes back, how do you play this position? Will we even talk about middle game ideas? And Queen D3 is now the computer's top choice threatening this pawn and after here you can even go e4 and you have a very strong and um, big attack so bishop f5 is the second most popular choice that black has but we now really like this approach where after e3 we normally play e3 anyway it's a useful move our knight is going to fly there so that's something else which is a little bit you know individual now the third most popular choice is c6, but this doesn't really have much independent value. Um, we don't think it's a particularly great move for black, this one, so we go past that. The fourth most popular move is a6. This is a much better try, where we're trying to stop the knight coming here. And there's been quite a lot of theory changes here, um, but not as much as some other lines. We're playing e3, and now black has two ways to play, c5 or e6. Now, if he plays the move c5, we actually consider this a slight mistake with our analysis because taking on c5 seems to give white an advantage in most lines as we, we show. And not much has changed here, so we won't spend too much here. White's better on most lines here. Now, e6 is a way that Peter Fiddler played against me. It's a very popular choice because black wants to expand on the queen side but he doesn't want to get hit by knight b5. So he's taken out time to do this. You could say our knight is even misplaced on c3. You know, during this course, I want to tell you honestly what I think about the Jabal of London. Some positions are equal, we, we feel, but with easier play for white, if black plays perfectly, so you'll find out black's best defenses, but we're still going to give you ways to give black some problems to solve. And um, in this system, our old idea was g4, but again, this bishop b4 move is a little bit annoying because generally you want to go something like knight e2. Maybe this pawn could be captured now. But another thing we've done during the course 
uh, the, you know, the research for this 13 hour plus video courses, we've looked at the latest computer games uh, and we've looked at all information we can find out there. And one of the, the stockfish on a very high level against another very strong computer played h4 in this position. And this is a new concept which we look at. And uh, the idea we can use this h pawn, very modern. This is a totally new idea in these positions to gain space. Uh, and you can also, I'll just show you a very important novelty, something else we found if uh, black now plays c5, so he continues his plan, we now go back to the g4 idea and let's say black plays normal moves, what could be more normal than knight c6? Well now we continue, we're attacking kingside on, on the other side, the knight should probably go back to d7, we develop our knight, black expands on the queen side, again a normal move, we now expand on the king side and here queen b6 this looks like a very normal move right but um it's it happened lots of times but now we we again using deep computer analysis uh we found a very uh nice idea which actually was played i think by uh i think it was matthew sadler who is the computer expert um and he played this in a lee chess game in 2022 brilliant player as well uh, and Matthew played a4 here. Uh, and this is bizarre because you're playing on both sides of the board. But after b4, does this pawn sack idea a5, and after knight takes knight a4, is actually a big advantage to white. And again, we, we discuss this in more detail in, 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 our, in our main course. So that's uh, also something else to bear in mind, this little h4 idea. Uh, another thing that we, we, see, we see more in this course, I, I should point out, is uh, you know we talk about your plans, what you should be trying to do. I mean, I think someone mentioned in one of my previous YouTube videos when I was playing the speed run, they're saying, how can you forget? So I think the position was, uh, and I'm probably gonna forget, <laughs> forget what I'm talking about now. The position was here, here, check, here, here. And you might remember that speed run where I was playing the cheat and I played A4 here. And, and a lot of comments were, well, how can you forget what, what, what move to play here? So I played B4. I played b4 first when I should have played a4. And the point is, every little secret, not a secret, every chess player forgets variations. How on earth, you, you, you're telling me that you don't forget lines now and again. I mean, if you are, you're lying or you're like 2900 strength. Even the top grandmasters forget lines, even if they've looked at them recently, um, which I've done with this course. I've studied this course in depth recently. But when you're playing blitz, it's hard to remember. The whole point that these these my courses are really aimed at is improving your chess, not just in blitz, but in classical over the board chess. So you can see sustainable advancements in your play, not just quick tricks. We wanna see you getting good results in the long term. And um, I knew that one of these moves was the right move to play, and I got in trouble by playing B4. But uh, as we show, a4 is correct, and I, I really hope that over in a, in a real like Reykjavik open over the board situation, I'll be able to work out what the best move was. But the whole point I'm trying to get at is one thing I really concentrate on in this course is the ideas. So it's not just I have to remember to go there if he goes there. I, I want to tell you why you're playing the move. So if you did forget something by having my little voice in the background, you should be able to recall what the right plan is because you will forget anyone who says they won't forget is a filthy liar and i mean come on you really don't forget okay the next thing we look at is c5 and this move is actually only black's fifth most popular choice but it's actually a pretty good choice and one of black's most challenging moves he comes straight for us and um we used to suggest e3 here uh, and in this case, we give you a new suggestion of e4, which is very exciting. It has been suggested in uh, other places as well, where black has to tread very carefully. We look at all of black's main responses, taking here and taking on d4. And um, we show you what we think black's best response is. But we also give you an alternative because, again, we're trying to think quite practically. And one of the biggest tricks that you get in the Jabal of London um, but it's also a good move. So we don't go for tricky moves they make your position worse. Is after e3, lots of players play knight c6 here, which is losing to knight b5. So 
I don't want to rule this one out. And as well as the E4 aggressive idea, which we look at in depth, we also show you how the current state of theory is with E3. And um, Black's best move here is to take here, rule out knight B5 with pawn here. But there's also new ideas, like bishop G4 has been a new concept played here. Uh, and again, this is all new stuff. But after A6, knight to F3. In our first course, my chessboard course, we only really concentrated on bishop g4 here, which after h3, it, it gives white a nice advantage. But the modern approach now for black is playing knight c6. And for some reason, we didn't look at this natural move in our first course. And we show you how white can still try to get something with this move knight e5 here. And this is very topical. But we're very honest and we feel that eight, c5 is one of the better moves that black can play if black really knows his theory. Um, now, um, this really quite, it's quite a simple opening to learn the Jabal of London. This is why, why it's very attractive. And these are kind of the main responses you're going to get with d5. But of course, we look at the latest things with g6. This is uh, um, quite trendy where we're going to suggest... As usual, you push h4. And here we think that now h5 is black's best response. So again, we're giving black's best responses here. Uh, I've got myself in trouble against this. Now, if black tries to play a king's Indian defense or something like a Benko, Benoni, and doesn't play d5, well, we're also going to show you that there's things that have changed here. Now, after queen d2, trying to go bishop to h6, castles castles knight c6 in our first course and this is quite a popular position we were suggesting knight to f3 but it's very clear now that the move f3 is a lot stronger and actually black is in serious trouble already here um this stops any of black's ideas we can attack very quickly over here and yeah black is is really struggling as such um and uh, again, I'm trying to keep this video quite short and sweet. Lots of other things are in the course that you might be interested in. It's all the latest theory up to date. Uh, and one other thing I wanted to do was give you access to uh, updates. And the way we decide to do this, that if you buy the course, you will get um, secret links to YouTube videos that um, only if you've bought the course you will get. So I've already got a 50 minute video one hour video up there on the Jabava London, which is an overview. So it's a bit like this, but in more depth, where if you've only got 50 minutes under an hour to learn something, you can learn the whole of the Jabava London by that secret link. And then you can go into the course, look at it in more detail in the course. And I'm gonna put more videos up on YouTube, answer your questions about the course on that YouTube channel. And if we just go to our, our well, you know, let's have a look at the actual page. Remember the description is below. In, and you can buy it there, please do consider that. And um, you can see here that there's a lot of description about that, but what else do you get? Well, you get fully annotated PGNs. So um, for each of the videos, there's um, a PGN, uh, a lot of them with text, some of them not with text, but the first ones with quite in-depth instructions. So, you know, you can see all these common ideas here. You can download the course or stream the course as usual. Uh, so you get the chess base file, so you can use it on chess base. You can use it in a lot of different places. And um, very shortly, we're going to introduce something very exciting called opening drills on uh, Ginger GM, where you will, this is going to be totally unique, where you'll be able to test your ability once you've learned this course on Ginger GM with a leaderboard by drilling some of the opening ideas. We're really excited about this, but we're going to release that soon. So thank you for watching all of this. I expect most of you haven't, but if you have, <laughs> extra congratulations. Um, please do consider buying the course now. It will really help support what I do uh, and the videos I make. A lot of work's gone into it, but you're also hopefully going to get something great in return. There's a money-back guarantee, and this is mine, my friend Blair's, and Stockfish15, and plus everyone else's because we've done the research and all their stuff. Latest thoughts on what this great opening can achieve the Jabava London. Uh, so check it out.